Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth, Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. The colleague for the seventh Sunday after Pentecost. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask and our ignorance in asking, have compassion on our weakness, and mercifully give us those things which for unworthiness we dare not, and for our blindness we cannot ask, through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hey, St. Michael's. Uh, I'll be reading a reading from the book of Genesis today. Uh, Jacob left Beersheba and went towards Haran. He came towards a certain place and stayed there for the night. Because the sun had set, taking one of the stones to the place, he put it under his head and laid down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, to the top of it reaching heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and your offspring, and your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And all of the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and, that, and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is uh, surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning, and he took the stone that he had put under his head and set it up as a pillar, and poured oil on top of it. He called this place Bethel, but the name of the city was Luz at first, the word of the Lord. Psalm 139, 1-11, 2, 22 through 23. Lord, you have searched me out and know me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you... O oh Lord, know it all together. You dwell upon me behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high I cannot attain to it. Where can I go then from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. Also. You, even there your hand will lead me, and your right hand hold me fast. If I say, surely darkness will cover me, and the light around me turn to night. 
Darkness is not dark to you, is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. Search me now, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my restless thoughts. Look well whether there be any wickedness in me, and lead me in the way that is everlasting. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A reading from the book of the Romans. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. But you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that spirit that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, their hairs, hairs of God and joint hairs of Christ. And in Christ, if in fact we suffer him so that we may also be glorified by him. I consider that the sufferings of the present, of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager long, longingly for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to fulfill, futility, not of its own, but will, but by the will of the one who subjected to it. And hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groan, groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For for in hope we are saved. We hope, now hope that it is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope that we do not see, we wait for it to, with patience. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Another parable Jesus put before the crowds. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No. For in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned. But gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. And the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one. 
and the enemy who, who saw them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let anyone with ears listen. The Gospel of the Lord. I preach to you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them into bundles to be burned. But gather the wheat into my barn. But gather the wheat into my barn. It's Youth Sunday again here at St. Michael and All Angels. And I want to thank the young people who are assisting today with the liturgy. Let's look at our gospel story where we find Jesus is telling a story about a farmer who had a weed problem, a serious weed problem. Our Bibles actually use the word weed. But what Jesus said, the word he used was darnel, a nasty kind of weed that looked like wheat. See, it was hard to tell the difference between real wheat and darnel. First problem. Secondly, it was bitter. You could not use it. And thirdly, and more importantly, it was poisonous. It could really make you sick. So the workers for that, that man came and said to him, Sir, we planted good seed. Where did the darnel come from? And the farmer said, I know. It was my enemy, an envious competitor. Well, you young people, you have your own competitors at school, in your classroom. Sometimes they try to sabotage your best effort, who do mean things. Well, hear this, young friends. The world hasn't changed much. Well, for the older ones among us, how about that neighbor who decides to run the lawnmower when everyone is trying to sleep late on Saturday morning. I hope none of us here at St. Michael and All Angels will ever be accused of behaving in that way. But back to the story. The workers are angry. The workers are frustrated. They tell the farmer, no, this enemy will not win. Let us go and uproot the darno. And he says, no, for if you do that, you will lose the wheat as well. Let them grow together. And at harvest time, we will separate the weed, the darno, from the wheat. In fact, we're going to harvest them first. We're going to put them in bundles and we will burn them. And then we will gather the wheat. Another parable of Jesus, one that Matthew shares with us, another story that Matthew actually shared with the early church. And in that parable, Jesus was saying to those who listened to him that the world is made up of all sorts of people. 
mean, and then those who do loving things. You know, those who are helpful, those who are sympathetic, those who are empathetic, those who are always ready to offer a helping hand, particularly to those who are less fortunate as opposed to those who think only about themselves, those who only want everything for themselves. I sometimes think that Jesus had the church in his mind when he told that parable. For fellow believers could be, be kind, as well as they could be mean. Believers could be honest, and believers could be dishonest. Believers could be generous, and believers could be stingy. And maybe Jesus was putting us on notice that his church, you and me, will include among us both sinners and saints. Yes, we are. And here's what Jesus himself said, there is none that doeth good, no, not one. None that doeth good. None that is truly worthy of God's love and his forgiveness. No, not one. But if that is so, what should we do about his church? Should we go through the church taking everyone's spiritual temperature? We live in a time when, when they're taking our temperatures, when we go into business establishments, just to make sure we haven't contracted the COVID virus. But the spiritual temperature, should you be checking on that? Jesus says, no. Should we ask those who enter our church door, are you a sinner or a saint? Again, Jesus says to us, no. I want to share a little secret with you about Matthew. You see, he was a Jewish convert to Christianity. And he was very concerned about the kind of people who were coming into the church. As we would say today, he had a real concern about some of the people who kept showing up. He believed that Christians should be above reproach, almost sinless. And to show how serious he saw the Christian experience, he put into the mouth of Jesus these words. Whoever even looks at a woman with a lustful eye has committed adultery in his heart. Even looking for him was a sin. In other words, impure, unholy thoughts can cost you and me our place in God's kingdom. So what should the church do with those who look a little shady? Well, Jesus provides us with an answer. He says we are all sinners. None of us is worthy. As St. Paul the Apostle told the early church, by the grace of God, I am what I am. It is only by God's grace, his amazing grace, that we are what we are. What Jesus was saying, let God decide. And as the farmer told his workers, let them grow together. And at harvest time, I will deal with the darnel. We can become, however, too trusting. We can let our guards down as Christians. We can become so holy that we allow ourselves to be taken advantage of. Hear this. Jesus expects us, his followers, to be wise as serpents and gentle as doves. He says that. He expects us to be wise, to be smart, to be able to spot temptation from a distance. We as a church has got to be wise in all our doings. So if we see a brother or a sister has a drinking problem, an illness to be cured, 
we should not put that person in charge of the communion wine supply. Or ask someone who has been accused of shoplifting to take up the offerings on the Sunday morning. He will not expect the vestry to appoint a person who is a known child abuser to be in charge of the youth program. At the same time, at the same time, he does not expect us to go around pointing fingers at anyone. He says in his gospel, judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. He also says, look at the beam in your own eye before you see the speck little thing in your brother's eye. Here's the truth, brethren. We all have specks in our eyes, for none of us is perfect. And what Jesus is saying to us today, let us seek to be loving and patient and forgiving and understanding towards each other. Indeed, let us seek to focus less on the sins and shortcomings of others and more on ours. Amen. Let us reaffirm our faith together, saying the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the People, Form 2, found on page 385 in the Book of Common Prayer. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our presiding Bishop Michael, our elected Bishop John, our assisting Bishops Charles and Dorsey, our Rector Hugh, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of Him. Pray that they may find and be found by Him. I ask your prayers for the departed. I ask your prayers for the special needs and concerns of this congregation, especially our sick and homebound, as well as those who are in need of prayers and healing. For those confined to health care facilities, Ophelia. For those at home, Cheryl, Rosalind, Ella, Sam. Jewel, 
James, Tony, Reverend Leslie, Louis, Reverend Ralph, Lionel, Charles, Joan, Howard, Randolph, Franklin and Audrey, Christine, Lamar, and Linda. For those in the care of the doctor, Chestin, Joycelyn, Al, Elaine, Joanne, Willie Mae, Lauren, Clifford, Dr. Derek, Marva, Scott, Kayla, Dolores, Hattie, Alexis, Mark, the Worthen family, Jasmine, Chevette, Rasheen, Kurt, Rudolph and Melva, Lillian, Dolores, Stella, Pamelia, Kelsey, Erica, Clint, Renrick, Jeffrey, Kurt, Dolores, Harold, Maylene, Ina, Darlene, Doreen, Malcolm, and Salute. For those in the military, Lindsay, Clark, Brienne, Vashti, Thandi, and you may add your own petitions. Pray that they may be healed and delivered from their distress. I ask your thanksgiving for all life's blessings. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. We serve a God who loves us and forgives us. So let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. It is God's peace that we share. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Our service continues on page 
361 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name, holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy send Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. my Lord and my God. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. My Lord and my God. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O oh Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrifice for us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take him in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. Lord, I'm not worthy. Lord, I'm not worthy. Lord, I'm not worthy. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Preserve my body and soul into everlasting life. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Preserve my body and soul into everlasting life. Take a drink. Remember that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts. By faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the blood of Christ. Amen.
the post-communion prayer on page 366 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and all those whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen. I want to thank our production crew. You know them by now. And also for those who participated in the liturgy, Colton, and Omar, and Hollis, and Danielle. And then the special we had involving Nicolette and, and our senior warden, uh, Zolly, and of course, Ivana, who was our organist assisting at this service. Thank you all. Continue to pray for St. Michael and all angels and all that we are seeking to do. Pray that God will continue to bless us as a church family. Let us pray also for our diocesan family, for our Appalachian region, for Episcopalians everywhere. Let's pray especially for our presiding bishop at this time and for our nation's leaders on both sides of the political divide. Let us pray that God's peace and God's justice will be in evidence every day of our lives. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. <laughs>